Welcome to the YouTube channel Bookworm. Today, we will listen to a brief retelling of the following book. Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. In a nutshell, a man is found on the express train, stabbed to death by a dozen. The famous detective finds out that, wanting to avenge the death of a little girl, all the passengers of the train participated in the murder. Part 1. Data. From the Syrian city of Aleppo, an express train leaves for Istanbul. One of the passengers on the express is Detective Hercule Porat. In addition to him, Colonel Arbuthnot, who is heading from India to England, and a young English woman from Baghdad, Miss Mary Dabenham, who works there as a governess, travel in the carriage. During the journey, friendly relations are established between the colonel and the girl. Suddenly, the express stops due to a trifling breakdown. She is quickly eliminated, but the express loses time. Miss Mary is very worried. If she does not arrive on time, she will be late for the Orient Express, and she really needs to get on it. In Istanbul, Porat stays at a hotel. There, he spots an elderly American, Mr. Ratchet, who is accompanied by a secretary, Mr. McQueen. Unexpectedly, Porat receives a telegram saying that he urgently needs to leave for London. He decides to take the Orient Express, but despite the winter dead season, all seats are taken. Suddenly, it turns out that one of the passengers did not appear, and the detective is given the vacant seat in the Istanbul Kale carriage. Poirot's roommate turns out to be Mr. McQueen. The train leaves for a three-day trip across Europe. The famous detective is studying fellow travelers in his car. There are 13 of them. Italian Antonio Foscarelli, American Mr. Hardman, Russian Princess Dragomirova, elderly American Mrs. Hubbard, who talks all the time about her daughter and grandchildren, middle-aged Swedish Greta Olsen, German maid Princess Hildegard Schmidt, Count and Countess Indrini from Hungary. Porat also sees Colonel Arbuthnot, Mary Dabenham, and Mr. Ratchet with Secretary McQueen and Servant Masterman among his fellow travelers. It seems strange to the detective that people of different classes and nationalities have gathered in one place. Express arrives in Belgrade. They add a new car, and Pora takes the empty compartment. After two days of travel at night, a terrible scream is heard. Pora looks at his watch and sees that it shows 20 minutes to one. He looks out into the hallway and notices the conductor knocking on the next compartment, which Ratchet occupies. Someone answers in French and the conductor goes to another compartment because a light bulb has come on there. Poirot cannot sleep for a long time. He hears someone calling for a guide, then Mrs. Hubbard's voice reaches him. The conductor, who was called by Poirot, complains that the American went wrong, as if she had a man in the compartment. Suddenly, it seems to the detective that something heavy has hit the door. Poirot looks out into the corridor and sees the guide sitting in his place and a woman in a red kimono embroidered with dragons. In the morning, it turns out that the train has stopped. They got into a drift lane, and now it is not known when the journey will continue. At noon, Porat is summoned to the compartment of the head of the train. The help of the famous detective is needed. Mr. Ratchet was found stabbed to death in the compartment. Seeing that the passenger did not get out and did not answer the knock, the conductor decided to open the door with his key, but it was locked from the inside and closed with a chain. Entering the compartment, he saw that the window was open and the passenger had been killed by a dozen stab wounds. After examining the corpse, the doctor came to the conclusion that the blows were not delivered by a professional. Some were done with the left hand, others with the right, some were done when Mr. Ratchet was already dead. Due to heavy snow, no one could leave the car, so the killer is on the train. Porat is talking to the secretary, Mr. McQueen. The young man worked for the victim for about a year. He cannot provide any information about his master, only that recently someone has sent him threatening letters. Together with the doctor, the detective inspects the compartment. No one could leave him through the window. The victim lies on his back, with a pistol under his pillow. After examining a glass of water 
and finding sleeping pills in it, they come to the conclusion that the victim was euthanized. There are burnt matches of various shapes and a charred piece of paper in the ashtray. In the corner of the compartment is a piece of cambric with the letter H. The crumpled clock on the dead man's chest shows half past one. The detective's attention is drawn to the burnt paper on which you can read. Think little Daisy Armstrong. Now Porat understands who really was killed. The English Colonel Armstrong married the daughter of the famous American actress Linda Arden, and they had a girl, Daisy. When the girl was three years old, she was kidnapped and demanded a huge ransom. When the parents paid it, it turned out that the girl was already dead. While pregnant, Mrs. Armstrong gave birth to a stillborn baby in shock and died in childbirth. The colonel shot himself in grief. Daisy's nanny, a French woman, was accused of kidnapping. The girl denied everything and committed suicide in despair. Then it turned out that she was innocent. The kidnapper and murderer of the girl, a certain Cassetti, escaped retribution and lived under the name Ratchet. The famous detective studies the facts. Part 2. Witness Testimony Porat interrogates witnesses. Conductor Pierre Michael. The conductor has been serving for many years. He has an impeccable reputation. He knocked on Ratchet's door. They answered him. Then he went to another compartment, then went out to another car. Returning, the conductor went to Mrs. Hubbard, who claimed that there was a man in her compartment, then looked to Porat. The rest of the time he sat in his place and saw a woman in a red kimono embroidered with dragons who walked along the corridor at night. Secretary Hector McQueen. The young man did not know that his master was Daisy Armstrong's killer. Hector's father was the prosecutor who led the trial, and he would rather have his right hand cut off than work for the killer. To Ratchet, the young man mainly served as an interpreter, since he did not speak foreign languages. After supper, Hector dropped in on his master, then talked with Colonel Arbuthnot until two o'clock in the morning. At night, the secretary saw both the guide and the woman in the red kimono. McQueen is surprised the note hasn't been completely destroyed, even though Porat didn't mention it. Servant Masterman Masterman put Ratchet's clothes in order, prepared him sleeping pills for the night, and went to his compartment, where he remained all night. He did not know anything about the fact that his master was the kidnapper of the girl. Mrs. Hubbard Mrs. Hubbard went to bed and sensed that there was a man in her compartment. She called the conductor, but he did not find anyone in the compartment. He closed the door to Ratchet's adjacent compartment, but did not approach the window. But in the morning, she found a button from his jacket near the window. The door to the next compartment, according to the lady, was locked. In the evening, Greta Olsen came to Mrs. Hubbard's for aspirin, having previously confused the lady's compartment with Ratchet's. The purse containing the aspirin hung on the door and blocked the bolt. Taking the medicine, Olsen checked the bolt and said that it was locked. Mrs. Hubbard could only hear snoring from Ratchet's compartment. Of course, she knew about Daisy's murder, but she did not know anyone from the Armstrong family. When asked by Porout about the red kimono, Mrs. Hubbard replies that she does not have such clothes. During the conversation, the American incessantly recalls her daughter and grandchildren. Greta Olsen. Since the Swede speaks French, Porat speaks French to her. She accidentally opened the door to Ratchet's compartment, then went to Mrs. Hubbard's for an aspirin, checked that the bolt was locked, and returned to her compartment. She knows nothing about Daisy's kidnapping and murder. Princess Dragomirova. The princess did not leave her compartment all night. About an hour the maid came, gave her a massage and left. She was familiar with the Armstrong family. Linda Arden was her close friend. The actress had another daughter, but the princess does not know anything about her. Dragomirova does not have a red kimono. Count and Countess Indrani. The count slept at night and did not hear anything. He did not know the Armstrong family. In the Count's passport, on the name of his wife, Elena Goldenberg, a greasy spot was found, apparently a trace from the finger of a sloppy official. 
The Countess also did not hear anything about what had happened, since she took sleeping pills at night and slept. She doesn't have a red kimono either. Colonel Arbuthnot. The Colonel confirms that he spoke with McQueen. He did not know the Armstrong family. Mr. Hardman. Mr. Hardman said that he works as a traveling salesman, travels from Istanbul to Paris on company business, and knows nothing about what happened. But it soon turns out that he is a private detective hired by Ratchet. The victim was afraid of a short, dark-haired man with a squeaky voice. Who his client really was, Hardman did not know. Mr. Antonio Foscarelli. Foscarelli knows nothing about what happened. His neighbor Masterman did not leave the compartment, and Antonio is not familiar with the Armstrong family. Miss Mary Dabenham. Mary is on her way to London from Baghdad, where she has served as a governess. Waking up at five in the morning, she looked out into the corridor and saw a figure in a red kimono. Who it could be, she does not know. Hildegard Schmidt. The maid was with the princess, then she returned to her compartment and knows nothing about the murder or the red robe. Leaving her mistress, she saw the guide, a short, dark-haired man with a squeaky voice. After listening to the passengers, Porat sums up. Apparently, the crime was committed at a quarter to one, as the clock of the murdered man shows, but then the killer could not leave the train. Two mysterious characters also appeared, a conductor, who is not on staff, and a woman in a red kimono, which none of the passengers has. Suddenly, Mrs. Hubbard rushes in, finding a huge bloody knife in her purse. Poirot inspects her compartment. He reconstructs the picture of last night. The door to the next compartment was closed, the bolt was hidden under the purse. Olsen could push the door and decide that it was bolted, although the bolt was raised and the door was closed on the other side. Opening the door, the killer entered Mrs. Hubbard's compartment. Poirot inspects the luggage of the passengers. His attention is drawn to a fresh sticker on Countess Indreni's suitcase. In the luggage of the maid Schmidt, the detective finds the uniform of the conductor. The German woman assures that this thing does not belong to her. Trying to calm the woman down, Poirot says he believes her. There were no buttons on the uniform, and in the pocket there was a universal key to all the express compartments. A stranger, dressed in the uniform of a conductor, could open the door to Mrs. Hubbard's compartment with such a key. Poirot finds a red kimono in his suitcase. The famous detective accepts the challenge. Part 3. Poirot settles himself comfortably and thinks. First of all, the famous detective draws attention to the fact that the victim did not speak foreign languages, and the guide was answered in French. Consequently, there was a man in Ratchet's compartment at night who spoke French. All passengers have solid alibis and no motive for committing the murder. But the famous detective Hercule Porat notices even the smallest things. Why does Countess Andrini have a fresh greasy stain on her passport and a fresh sticker on her suitcase? Yes, because her name is not Elena, but Helena, and she wants to hide it. The killer planned to get on the train, disguised as a conductor, commit the murder, and get off at the station. The corpse was supposed to be found only in the morning, when it was already far away, but the killer's plans were violated by a snowdrift. While waiting in the compartment of the murdered train, he decides to burn the note, but he makes a mistake a second time and burns it in completely. It was necessary to destroy the paper because of the presence on the express of a person so close to the Armstrong family that suspicion immediately fell on him. Another clue is a handkerchief with the letter H. Judging by the expensive fabric, the scarf can only belong to Princess Dragomirova, whose name is Natalia or Countess Andrini. Mrs. Armstrong's mother's surname was Goldenberg, as was Countess Andrini's maiden name, hence the Countess is Mrs. Armstrong's younger sister. The Countess confirms Poirot's conclusions, but denies her involvement in the murder. In conversation, she mentions the governess she had as a child. She does not remember her name, but Porat guesses that it is Mary de Benham. She admits he was right, 
and the princess recognizes her handkerchief. But could she kill? Foscarelli admits to Porat that he worked as a chauffeur for the Armstrongs. Greta Olsen was Baby Daisy's nanny. Masterman served as Colonel Armstrong's Batman. Poirot gathers passengers in the dining car and offers two versions of the murder. According to the doctor, death occurred between 12 and 2 o'clock. At half past one in the night skidding began, and it was impossible to leave the train, especially since Mr. Hardman, who occupies the last compartment, claims that no one got off. Therefore, the killer is in the car. But there is another version. The killer in the form of a conductor made his way into the car, went into Ratchet's compartment, killed him, entered Mrs. Hubbard's adjacent compartment through the unlocked door, thrust a knife into her purse, threw the uniform into the first compartment he came across and exited the train in front of departure. But what about the clock that showed half past one? The fact is that the train crossed the time zone, but Ratchet forgot to switch the arrows, which means that the murder happened an hour earlier, at half past one. Surprised by such a motley company gathered on the same train during the low season, Porat decides to find out what each of the passengers has to do with the Armstrong family. He analyzes their testimony. McQueen was surprised that the note was not burned, therefore, he knew about it, which means he is the killer or his accomplice. Masterman says that he gave the master sleeping pills for the night. But the person who hides a weapon under his pillow is clearly going to stay awake. Hardman was going to guard Ratchet. So why didn't he spend the night in his compartment? Mrs. Hubbard asked Greta Olson to see if the deadbolt, which is positioned so that her purse cannot obscure it, is closed. The testimonies of these people reinforce each other. The famous detective concludes that everyone is involved in the crime, including the conductor. When a skid interfered with their plans, they came up with a story with a guide and a woman in a red kimono. Instead of Countess Andrini, a close relative of the Armstrong family, her husband was involved in the murder. The guide Pierre Michael was the father of the unfortunate girl who committed suicide, Hartman was her fiancé, and Colonel Arbuthnot was a family friend. Schmidt worked in the Armstrong house as a maid, and Mrs. Hubbard was the mother of Mrs. Armstrong and Helena Andrini, the famous tragic actress Linda Arden. They all loved little Daisy and were all shocked by her terrible death. Having agreed, they sentenced Cassetti to death, and each of them struck him a blow, because all the blows were different. The famous detective also guesses about the mutual love between Mary Debenham and Colonel Arbuthnot. Having solved this puzzle, the famous detective takes his leave, offering to leave the version with the killer in the form of a conductor to the police. 